This is a relict from the Cold War. A CD V700 Geiger counter. Um, it has been made from about 1950 to end of 1960 and it has been produced in large quantities. Uh, there have been a lot of different uh, manufacturers. This one comes from uh, Electro Neutronics Inc. It was made in uh, 1963 or 64 according to the manual. And this is the manual that was supplied with the unit. Um, it's a very uh, detailed manual about the, uh, the use and also the maintenance of the unit, including a lot of pictures. and a schematic diagram and also a very precise description of um, all the circuits or of the circuit here including a sketch for the uh, blueprint for the PCB so if you want, you can make one by yourself. There is the part list, everything here in military precision with part numbers and everything. Okay, let's have a look inside. It's very easy to open. It has two latches here. That's the headphone plug. There is again the schematic diagram in case you lose it from uh, if you lose your manual. Um, we have four D cells, still the same size as today. Here you see some part of the PCB. There's some kind of integrated circuit on a ceramic plate. Okay, it's only a couple of resistors, a capacitor and a trim pot. Um, the capacitor down here is a new one. I replaced them some time ago. We have some old style transistors here, a couple of diodes and that's it and a meter movement and a range selector switch. The most important part of course on a Geiger Müller counter it's the Geiger tube. It's inside this brass case here and it has a small window that can be opened to expose the tube directly and this is used to measure beta radi uh, radiation which is normally blocked uh, because of the massive tube around and only gamma radiation will penetrate the tube so you can uh, choose what kind of radiation you want to count. Let's have a look on the schematic diagram. We have the batteries down here with the first stage of the switch which is simply an on-off function. Power goes to this oscillator circuit here and through the diode a positive voltage is supplied to this Geiger-Müller tube here. And the tube works like that. There is a, a metal tube with the wire inside along the tube. And while the outer tube is grounded, 
the inner tube has a high voltage and this high voltage is just a little bit less than uh, it would need to create an arc between the wire and the tube. Now if a, a particle comes, uh, comes along, uh, a radioactive particle, a beta or gamma particle, it will create uh, an additional energy inside the tube and uh, a little arc will happen, which is then uh, extinguished almost immediately because we have a 2.7 megohm resistor here that uh, limits the current to a very low uh, value. So every particle makes this tube arc a little bit and that creates an impulse that goes through this capacitor here to this to transistor stage. So what the Geiger-Müller counter does is in fact it only counts the uh, amount of uh, incidence from the tube here. It doesn't uh, distinguish between uh, high energy or low energy uh, particles. It just tells you how many particles per minute or per hour or whatever uh, come along and this will be displayed here on the meter. Now uh, the two transistors here are in fact or better the first transistor here together with no, the second two with these two uh, capacitors that's an impulse forming uh, circuit or uh, today we would say a, a monoflop. It is triggered by the impulses that come from the tube here and the transistors they stay on for a certain time which is distinguished by the two capacitors here and uh, this choke here L1 and also some of the, uh, of the resistors here and that means for every particle that comes here makes an impulse, a bigger or a smaller impulse, it doesn't matter it triggers this monoflop circuit for a short time and of course the more impulses they come the more impulses will be generated here until there are so many that they are so close together that uh, they almost touch each other and then you have to switch to from the X1 to the X10 or X100 uh, range. This does this changes for example the two capacitors here making the individual impulses shorter so it's possible to count more impulses and of course you then have to calculate the factor x10 x100 uh, to the reading of your meter and you know more or less about uh, how many particles per hour uh, are measured. Okay, uh, then we have, so the signal comes up that way, goes to this switch with the two resistors, another diode, and then to the meter, and here is another diode that goes out to the headphone jack. And this diode here, CR1, is just to uh, limit the impulse to the headphone jack and also to uh, eliminate any negative impulses. We only want positive impulses here. 
don't know why maybe it sounds better so yeah that's a pretty simple circuit uh, by the way the voltage here is about 930 volts that goes to the tube here um, and everything is detailed there's a detailed description of everything high voltage power supply 930 volt plus minus 20 volts um, how to replace the tube if it's necessary but I think there have been produced so many of these units you would simply change the unit except instead of changing the tube pull shaping network that's the monoflop I described if you want you can read the entire capital here audio pulse amplifier that's one of the two transistors we have ohmmeter voltmeter check there is the layout of the PCB and also the layout of the tracks as I said if you want you can make your own yeah that's about it now let's see how it works okay first step is to switch it on I put it in the, the X1 uh, position then I take the tube here and then on the side here is a radioactive sample that can be used to uh, check if everything here is working normally there's not much on the beta uh, on the gamma radiation now I open the beta window and we get a little bit of something to switch down to the X10 okay I don't know how much it should be here because the sample is as old as the unit of course but uh, a more interesting thing would be an old dial or also uh, an old clock face would work this one comes from a DC3 it's probably from the 1930 1940s there is not much gamma radiation but if I open the beta window we see this is pretty radioactive that's the uh, the paint that is radioactive it's paint that glows in the dark this paint has radium inside that makes it glow in the dark uh, that's different from modern glow in the dark paints they work with a different principle they charge up on ultraviolet or visible light and then they give this light away for a certain time okay I think that's about it <laughs>